Their hope is in the Lord. Their hope is in Christ. Verse 14. Notice, he explains it in very clear terms. For if we believe that Jesus what? Okay, so what do you have to believe to have hope? What did it say? For if we believe that Jesus died and what? So if you believe that Jesus died for your sins and rose again as a payment for your sin, now you have what? You have hope. Verse 14, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, notice, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God what? So those believers who have already died or passed on, when the event the passage is referring to occurs, the Lord is going to bring them what? With Him. Which means they are already where? With Him now. You know the verse, right? To be absent from the body is to be present with who? The Lord. And when this event that this passage is talking about happens, the reason these people have hope is because they're already with the Lord, and when the Lord comes, He's going to bring them what? With Him. Verse 15. For this we say unto you, notice, by the word of the Lord. Now i got a question for you. Who else uses that expression in the Scripture? By the word of the Lord. The Old Testament what? Prophets. Don't they say that? What is Paul doing here? Look at the verse. For th verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of who? Paul is giving the body of Christ. He is using the terminology of prophecy is what he's doing. And he's telling the body of Christ that they have a future for sure predicted here what? Hope. Now is it the same hope that Israel had? Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, here it is, that we which are alive and what? Remain unto the coming of who? Okay, think with me folks. Titus 2.13, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious what? Appearing. We are looking for it because some of us may be still what? Alive when the event what? occurs. Verse 15, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not what? Prevent them which are what? So if, if this event happens in ten seconds, the fact that we're alive and remain, is that fact going to prevent these dead saints from participating? The answer is what? No. Verse 16, here it is. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a what? With a shout! Who's going to descend? The Lord what? Himself. What does He say in Titus chapter 2, verse 13? And the glorious what? Appearing of the great God and our Savior who? So who appears in heaven with a shout in that verse? What did it say? Verse 16, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with what? A shout. With the voice of the archangel. Notice, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise what? So, how's that work? He brings them with Him, but the dead in Christ what? So there's a resurrection of the body here. To be reunited with your soul and spirit. You see that? Because the dead in Christ, he already told you earlier in the passage that he's going to do what? He's going to bring them what? With him. But then, those of us that are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep because the dead in Christ are going to do what? Rise first. And there's going to be a reunion of body, soul, and spirit that occurs when this event happens. You see that? Now, let's go on. The event is accompanied with the shout. Uh, and the voice of the archangel and the trump of God. <coughs> verse 17. What's the first word in verse 17? Then. Is that a time word? 
That's a time word. So after the dead in Christ rise first, verse 17, then we which are alive and what? Remain shall be caught up together with them, the dead in Christ who have already raised, in the clouds to meet the Lord where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with who? Does the Lord Jesus Christ at this event set one muscle on this planet? No. It is a reunion of the saints where? In heaven. Where does it occur? It occurs in heaven. Then we which are alive and remain, verse 17, shall be caught up. What does the term caught up mean? We don't have time to look at this, but write down Acts chapter 8, verse 39, where, where Philip is talking to the Ethiopian eunuch, and he explains to the Ethiopian eunuch the verses he has questions about, and then the Scripture says that he's caught away. What does that mean? He's what? He's moved something. God just comes down and snatches that guy and moves him somewhere else and takes him away from where he is. Now what does the term rapture mean from the first point of the message? See, don't let anybody blow smoke at you and say there's no such thing as a rapture because that phrase caught up is exactly what the definition of the word rapture means. It means to be what? We will be, if we are alive, we will be caught up to meet the Lord where? In the air. And so shall we ever be with who? The Lord. Look at the last verse, verse 18. Wherefore, do what? Comfort one another with what? Doesn't that give you comfort? If that doesn't, go back up to verse 13. For I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no what. See, we have hope. And the hope that we have is a blessed hope. And the blessed hope that we have is tied to the glorious appearing of who? The Lord Jesus Christ. So that we can comfort one another with these what? You know, we got some folks in here right now, today, that are facing major medical things. How do you deal with that as a believer? How do you deal with knowing that somebody telling you you have the C word? How do you do that? You fix your hope where it should be fixed on Christ. That's how you deal with it. You focus your hope on Christ. You know that you have this glorious appearing. You read the Scripture. You believe what the Scripture says. You take that into your life, into your inner man, and you allow the comfort of the Scriptures to give you hope. What does Paul say in Romans chapter 5? He says, patience worketh experience, and experience what? Hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. There's hope here. There's comfort here. There is something here that if you don't wrap your mind around as a believer, you will miss out on something that is designed for you to help you according to the Word of God. Now, we've got to move on from that point if I'm ever going to finish. This is not the same event, folks as when Jesus comes bodily back, or back bodily to the Mount of Olives from whence He ascended in Acts chapter 1. I hope that you see that. Now, the Apostle Paul states many times that the body of Christ is what? A mystery. We're not going to have time to read those verses. Come with me to 1 Corinthians 15. This meeting in the air of the saints Dead saints, living saints, this reunion to meet the Lord in the air. Do you read about that in prophecy? 1 Corinthians 15, 51. Behold, I show you a what? A mystery. We shall not all what? Now didn't 1 Thessalonians 4 just tell you that? Didn't 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 just tell you that we which are alive and remain? So will there be some believers that are still alive, that still remain on earth when this event happens? Okay? And he, Paul is saying here that, behold, I show you what? A mystery. He is showing you something now that was shown to him 
that was not previously revealed and before Paul. Behold, I show you mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Paul says here that he is making known a mystery or something not previously made known. Not every member of the body of Christ is going to die before the current dispensation of grace has run its course. But all members will be what? Changed. You see that? Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Changed. Paul already told us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through 18, that not every believer would sleep <coughs> or die before Christ appeared in heaven to catch away his church. I just said that. Okay? The only suitable way for this unprophesied age to end is through a previously unprophesied appearing of who? Christ appears in Acts 9 to Saul of Tarsus, saves him, and begins revealing stuff to him about what he's doing through an appearing. The only suitable way for that dispensation to end is through a subsequent what? Appearing. That is not made known, that is not revealed, that is a mystery, that is unsearchable throughout the prophetic scripture. You see that? Now, there's more detail here. We need to talk about the blessed nature of our hope. As the last point, look at 1 Corinthians, look at verse 51 again. Behold, I show you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be what? Notice, in the moment, I'm sorry, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, now don't get all bent out of shape. First, First Thessalonians chapter 4 told you that when Christ appeared, when the coming of the Lord, that he was going to appear with the voice of the archangel and with the what? You know what the, word tru you know what the difference between trumpet and trump is? A trumpet is referring to the actual what? Instrument. You know what trump means? A trump means sound or reverberation that the trumpet makes when it is blown. When Christ appears in heaven, he, the, a, a trumpet is going to be blown. And it's going to sound. Now follow me, with me this. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet, it's obvious. He's not talking about, here's what people do. They say, well see, that event is in Revelation when the seventh trumpet sounds. He just told you in verse 51 that it was a what? A mystery. So a trumpet is going to sound at the rapture. The last time that trumpet sounds at that event, for the trumpet shall sound, notice, and the dead shall be raised. How? How? Remember? Shall he bring with him, and we shall not prevent them which are asleep, and they shall be what? When they are, when the graves open up at that event and the dead in Christ raised from the dead, they are raised with a what kind of body? What kind of body? An incorruptible what? Body. Then it says, and we, the we there is those of us who have not fallen what? Asleep, we shall be what? Changed. You see that? The dead in Christ are going to be raised incorruptible, and we which are alive and remain, we shall also be what? Change. Read the next verse. For this corruptible, this, this corruption that I'm in right now, must put on what? Incorruption. And this mortal must put on what? Immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in what? Do you know, is that a blessed hope, folks? That's a blessed hope. That is something that you, you should, when, when your foot hits the, the floor in the morning, you should think, man, i got a blessed hope. i got to take the kids to school, got to do this, got to do that, got to clean, blah, 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 all this other stuff, but i got a blessed what? I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, I got to deal with this, got to deal with that, got to deal with him, got to deal with her, got to do all the stuff I don't want to do. But no matter what, I always have what? A blessed hope. 